Hello and welcome back to the very last episode of 2023. Not the very last episode ever, don't worry. There's still going to be another episode that drops next week. And there's actually going to be an entire client episode series that happens in January where I'm going to be bringing in some of my clients who have had just amazing results in all sorts of different aspects of their business to share the lessons that they've learned and how they've been able to get to the place where they're at. So stay tuned for that really excited to have that series kick off 2024. But how wild is it that we are literally in the last week of 2023? Wild. I am like freaking out a little bit panicking. (laughs) Not panicking like in a bad way, but like panicking in the way of like how the freaking heck did time fly by so fast? I don't know. And as we move into a new year, we're moving into just a few months away from being celebrating one year of radical disruption. Wild also. And the fact that we're at 47 episodes mind-blowing. Obviously, like, when I started a podcast, I knew I would get to this place. Not necessarily that's a surprise. Also, at the same time, it is a surprise. It's, oh, I'm still here. I'm still doing this thing, and people are still tuning in. It's just so wild, and I don't know why it feels so wild, because on Instagram, I've been at that for quite a bit longer than on this podcast and people obviously continue showing up on there and literally you guys are the best community ever on Instagram but for whatever reason like with podcasting I'm like wait people actually still want to keep hearing about what it is that I have to say in these like 5 to 60 70 minute podcast episodes bless your hearts <laughs> I appreciate you so much but really truly though like it's just been so cool to see how much this podcast community has grown over the last, it's been like, what, 10 months since I launched the podcast and just how it just keeps growing and growing and how the message just keeps spreading the different messages that are inside of each of these episodes. Thank you for literally making my dreams a reality and I'm not going to start tearing up, but I might start tearing up. It's just so cool. But as I was thinking about What I wanted to share in the very last episode of the very last Tuesday of the year, I was like, this is a lot of pressure. I'm like, what do I leave people with that's like super impactful? And the thing that I came up with after thinking about it for, honestly, I thought about this for a few weeks is two impactful questions. Now, these are two questions that I've been asked, not necessarily within the last year, but just throughout my journey through business. So basically the last two and a half years, I've been asked these two questions. And these are the two questions that have really stuck with me. Like I've been asked a lot of different questions, not just in terms of like clients asking me questions, but like coaches asking me questions, me asking myself questions. Like there's a lot of questions that go around, let's be honest, as business owners. Um, But these two have really stuck with me. And looking back, they really truly are the two questions that have probably made the biggest impact in my business. And so my hope is that bringing these two questions to you today, that it makes an impact in your business as well. And I just think it's such a great, these two questions are such great things to think about moving into a new year. So with all that being said, question number one is, actually there's three parts to this question, but they're all part of question number one. They all lead into each other. Number one, what do you want to be known for? Now, I was asked this question in October of 2022, and when I was asked this question, I thought of this as, oh, I'm going to answer this question, check the box, and move on type of thing, and I was like, oh yeah, I want to be known as an Instagram expert and as a business coach. I said that, and then I took a step back, and I was like, but wait, is that all? Is that all that I want to be known for? And I started diving a little bit deeper, and at that time in October of 2022, my answer to that question was so different than what I was actually known for in that moment. To dive deeper into that, in that moment, if I were to have asked anyone in my community, what do you know me as? Or even just people outside of my community who were familiar with my own, with my business and with my Instagram account, if I were to ask them, what do you know me as? I, a lot of the answers would have been like, you're the the reels girl and the reels transition and the Instagram girl. That's probably a lot of what the answers would have been. And while there's nothing wrong with that whatsoever, I just realized that what I wanted to be known for was not what I was known for. And there was a gap there, right? And so that kind of leads me to the next part of question number one, which is what you're doing right now 
helping you to become known for that thing that you want to be known for. Part number three of question number one is, are your actions in alignment with your purpose? And the more that I sat with this, I was like, I had like an oh crap moment. Not necessarily again, because there was anything bad with what I was known for in that moment. But I was like, I can't keep going down this road because this is not the road that I want to go down. This is not what my purpose is. This is not the impact that I want to make. And if you were in my community on Instagram at that time, in October of 2022, between really October of 2022 and December of 2022, there were major shifts that happened in the way that I was showing up. And it wasn't that like I stopped posting about Instagram tips and tricks, but like the way that I went about it and also the additional conversations that I was bringing to light were so different. And I had so many people who were like, whoa, Like I, and I was taking people along on the journey and I was telling them, I was like, this is like, something needs to change here. Not with my community or anything, but like with me, like the way that I'm showing up to be in alignment with what my purpose is. And I was explaining, I was taking people on this journey. And so they were seeing all these changes that were happening and people were like, this is, I see these changes. I can totally tell from October to December that you are basically a different person not again, not in a bad way. There was nothing wrong with the person that I was before. And then there were also people though, who were like, wait a second. I like the old you. I, can we go back to the reels girl, the tips, the, just the tips and the transitions and things like that. Can we go back to that? I don't really like the whole vulnerability stuff. Can we not do this? And it was interesting to see like how there are going to be people who like you in a certain way, but as you evolve and grow in your business, which like as human beings, I sure hope that we're all evolving and growing, that there are going to be people who don't necessarily like whatever it is that we're becoming. And so there are going to be people that we leave behind, not in a necessarily, again, a bad way, but there are also going to be people who come with us. And there are also going to be new people who come in who are attracted to this new version of whatever it is that we are trying to build and the purpose and the impact that we're trying to make. So there were just so many lessons that I learned from this literally one question, which is, what do you want to be known for? And I'm just so grateful that my coach at that time asked me this question because really, truly, it changed the entire trajectory of not just like the content that I was posting on Instagram. It that's honestly that question, what I want to be known for, it led me to creating this podcast. It led me to, to creating different offers than I had ever created before. It led me to different opportunities, guest speaking opportunities. It truly in so many different ways, not all at once, right? It wasn't like this question was asked to me and then the next day everything changed. I'm still in this continual process of really making sure that what I'm doing in my business and the way that I'm showing up is really helping me to become known for the thing that I want to become known for, which is so much deeper than just being the Instagram girl, the reels girl. What I want to be known for is someone who helps other people build sustainable businesses. I want to be known as the person that has these conversations in the entrepreneurship space and on social media that other people aren't having. And I want to be this person that does things different. I want to be an innovator. I want to be a disruptor. And that's honestly, as I was thinking about what I want to be known for, that word disruption, which is how the title Radical Disruption came about, that's all stemming from this one question. And so I just really hope that you ask yourself on such a much deeper, such a much, (laughs) on a deeper level than just like, what do you want to be known for? And then you list the titles that you want to be known for. But like really asking yourself, what do you want to be known for? Is what you're doing right now helping you to become known for that thing? And are your actions in alignment with your purpose? Okay, now question number two. Like I said, there were a lot of parts to question number one. Now we're on question number two. Instead of always asking how you can make more money, ask yourself, how can you make what you're already making right now even easier. And what I mean by this, and when this question was posed to me, I'll give context in just a second. Actually, yeah, let me share a little bit more about what I mean by this, and then I'll share the context. If you are making $10,000 a month, instead of asking yourself, how can I make $20,000 a month? Ask yourself, how can I make making $10,000 a month even 
easier. So instead of asking, how can you make more? Asking, how can you make it easier? Now, the context of where this question came from, I reached out to my coach and I was like, hey, my income isn't increasing on a month to month basis. And while there's nothing wrong with that, like, obviously that's great, <laughs> like the consistency of that. I was like, I want to make more. And, and I think in this exact moment, I was talking about scaling from like consistent 50k months to consistent 75k months. And I was like, I want to make more. And I was like, how? <laughs> I was like, I, I feel like I'm doing all of these things and understand that like, it's just a compound effect and it's going to happen over time. But like, how? And she posed this question to me and she said, instead of always asking how you can make more, ask yourself how you can make what you're already making that much easier. And what she went on to tell me with that question is when you ask yourself how you can make it even easier, you are getting yourself to a place where you're working less, where you have more systems put into place, where you're delegating more things, maybe you're automating more things. Again, it's getting easier, right? And as it gets easier, what often happens, you start to move into higher income levels without you even realizing it because it becomes easier, right? Or you open up your capacity to take on more because what you're doing right now is now easier than it was in the past. And that was just so freaking impactful for me in that moment. It still is to this day. I still continually ask myself this. There are very few times as of the last six months where I have asked myself, how can I make more money? I am always asking myself now, how can I make where I'm are the amount of money that I'm already making right now even easier? Because I recognize the power behind that, not just because that's going to be what helps me to get to the next level, but also because that's how you build a sustainable business. When you make the level that you're already at even easier, you're going to be able to sustain that even easier, right? And so if you do want to take on more, which you don't have to take on more to make more, which is also the power of asking this question too, is as it gets easier, it's eventually going to just lead you into that next level without you even having to do more. Um, but if you want to take on more, you definitely can. And so that's just something that I would post to you, especially as you are setting new goals for 2024. And I'm not saying that you can't set goals of making more money. Please don't get me wrong. But also setting goals of how can I make the like where I'm already at even easier? Because I think as we as entrepreneurs, and again, this is me speaking from myself to myself, it, we get so caught up in the doing more and like moving to the next thing that we never really ask ourselves that question of, but what if what if we just made where we're at even easier? What would that do? What capacity would that open up? What opportunities would that open up? And with that new capacity, with these new opportunities, then what's that going to lead me to? It's honestly, it's going to lead again, you, lead you to your goal. So thinking about that as you move into 2024 is yes, set the goals to make more money. That's amazing. Fantabulous. But also too, don't forget to set the goals of how you can make what you're already making that much easier. So that is my two impactful questions that I will leave you with in 2023 that I hope you carry with you into 2024. And I'm so excited for the many more conversations that we're going to have in 2024. Thank you so much for listening. And I hope that you have a happy new year.